Why, hello there everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Minasan, konbawa. Good evening everyone. And this video may be a little bit late, but hear me out. I've been busy. I've been doing some personal stuff of my life. So when it comes to making time to edit videos, it's honestly been quite a juggle between personal life and getting videos out for you guys. I do enjoy both, but uh, it's quite a lot for this new year for 2024. But anyhow though, as promised, today we're going to be feeding our inbound fori. And these inbound fori females are with their babies. And as you can see, they're pretty much crawling out and about now. So this is our last female to actually have her egg sac hatch out. Sadly, she didn't really want to come out today and she was a bit reclusive, which is pretty understanding because, you know, she just had her babies hatched out. So uh, yeah, this first one here, you want to really see her out, but she did eat. So that's at least a good sign for me, honestly. And her babies are out and about and wondering, which tells me they're happy, alive and doing quite well. And honestly, they're very chubby. <laughs> you can pretty much already tell just by looking. So some of you may be wondering how often and how much do I feed the mother and the babies. So typically, I just feed the mom. And usually, she will kill the prey and either leave it on the ground for the babies to scavenge and eat. Or the babies will pretty much hop along and try to snack off her food. Which is honestly kind of cute. And you will see that in this video. And typically, I do this every two to three days. Now, sometimes if I think the babies are looking kind of thin, I would actually just do the pre-killed prey myself and just scavenge it around the enclosure. But typically, the mother does a good job already, so I don't really need to actually leave pre-killed prey because to me, the mother is already more capable of doing the job. So you may have noticed that in my second specimen's enclosure here, you may have noticed that the babies are a little bit dark, but uh, don't worry, they're just in pre-molt, so they're pretty much getting ready to molt again. And some of these have already molted out, so nothing too crazy, but in general what i'm saying is that the majority of these babies will probably not eat because they're either freshly molted or in pre-molt now this female will not be out long because i will try to give her a second roach to see if she's hungry but instead she goes back into her hide and her babies the majority of them that is are pretty much in her hide with her and I tried to actually zoom in on them because while I can't see them in person, on camera, for some reason, it doesn't want to focus on them. And pretty much they're all hidden in a little clump in her hide. And while I can show everyone who's watching the babies that are out and wondering about, the majority of them are still pretty much hidden inside her burrow. So what you're seeing is just a small fraction of all of them. And some of you may be wondering why do I still have these slings? And the reason why is because these guys are not ready to be sold yet. In Balfouri, as a tarantula species, they're relatively undeveloped as second instar, and usually they become proper looking tarantula slings at about 6th to 8th instar. This is just my guesstimation on how many molts it takes, but somewhere around that ballpark. Based on my experience breeding and pretty much hatching out these guys myself, now I'm going to jump into the last female here, and this is the one where it's pretty much what you would expect of in Balfouri in a communal, I guess, but the babies and the mom. And this one is more interesting in observation. So yeah, let us get straight into this one. So this M4 here is the one with the most babies. I don't know exactly how many there are. I'd say somewhere between 30 to 60 babies in this one enclosure. There could be more, there could be less because there's a lot of these little guys hiding in the nooks and crannies of this enclosure. But for the most part, the majority of the slings do chill out at this one divot right at the end of the enclosure. And that's usually where the mom likes to hang out. So typically, the majority of them are pretty much hanging out with their mom in that one little divot right at the end, which I tried to show you guys, but for some reason, it didn't want to focus as well. But some of the babies will follow the mom out of the enclosure because as the mom's eating, pretty much the babies gather around and try to hop on her meal as well. And I'm very surprised that the mother did not actually chew up the babies as they was pretty much eating the same food she was eating. And it seems like the mother was careful to not chew any of the babies up because, uh, yeah, I stood there and watched about 40 minutes of this mom eating as she's chewing these roaches and whatnot. And I was so surprised because none of the babies got chewed up as she was chewing up this meal. And when I say surprised, that is an understatement because there was like 40 babies just, just, hang <laughs> there was literally like 20 babies just hanging on this mother's meal as she's chewing on it. It was just, <laughs> it was crazy to watch, man. So this is essentially my observation and what I've seen from this mother eating. It seems like she knows not to chew on her babies. 
which is why she's careful. And honestly, I'm surprised she didn't chew and eat any of them by accident because there was like so, I mean, you can see in the recording how many are gathered up. They're just balled up along with, you know, just, man, this is just crazy. Oh man, that's how you, <laughs> that is how you know that I'm enjoying this experience because, you know, tarantulas at this point for me, I've seen it all, done it all because you know i've been breeding tarantulas for a while now for a long time now and honestly when something new happens or i learn something new whether somebody humbles me tells me i'm wrong etc etc it is just a happy experience because <laughs> because it just tells me that there's so much more that i can look forward to when it comes to keeping tarantulas it's a never-ending learning process and i still enjoy that that's crazy man that's how you know I don't <laughs> that's how you know I do not do a script I do not do any scripts when it comes to my videos I just talk how I feel <laughs> and what I know look okay 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 I know I'm supposed to sound professional in here because you know I'm an experienced tarantula breeder I've been doing this for years I know the market etc etc I know how to breed but uh when I get excited I sound like a new beginner tarantula keeper just <laughs> just learning everything but uh, one day I'll find that person, that apprentice of mine, I guess, in the future that has that same enthusiasm and is willing to learn everything. But uh, just to, just 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 goes to show you guys that uh, even I enjoy tarantulas, you know, regardless of how long it's been. And as long as I have that passion and as long as you carry that passion as well, tarantulas is a hobby that is uh, way more addicting than you think. <laughs> oh, man. This, this commentary is going to be so offbeat today, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this side of things, I guess, because they don't happen often. But uh, let us get back into the Mbalfori. But anyhow, though, when it comes to these slings, I do not plan on keeping many of them. I'd say maybe five per female, so five slings per female, because I don't want to keep a thousand of these Mbalfori. For those longtime viewers of my channel, you already know I have uh, a bunch of juveniles, sub-adults, and pretty much some adults already that's ready to go but th that's the thing i already have too many i don't need more so the majority of these will most likely be wholesaled off to other tarantula breeders to sell to you guys or i may gift some of these away to some other tarantula breeders or aspiring tarantula breeders out there to help them get new bloodline in but either way though i don't plan on keeping all of these but as these slings are now, they still need more time to develop and molt out into proper looking slings before I can actually, you know, give these out or sell these away. But that'll be for the future. And I think I'll wrap it up around here for today's video. So without further ado, as always, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to support this channel. And also stick around, I upload every single Tuesday and Friday here on this channel. Please support me on my IG and on Patreon, my social medias. And with that, stay lax and Laxo out from the Kumo Sensei.